Hello, welcome to the Friday, September 2nd, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Yesterday I talked about Apache patching a vulnerability in Geode. I noted how this deserialization vulnerability CVE 2022-37021 only affects Geode if Java 8 is used and if the data is being delivered via JMX. JMX, that's the Java management extension, is a standard API that allows you to monitor and manage services. It is an important vulnerability, but overall I didn't consider it urgent given that these are not services that are typically exposed. But when looking at my honeypot logs today, I noticed some new scans that started showing up around the time the geode vulnerability started to become known. The requests used a URL typically for Jolokia, and I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, an HTTP to JMX gateway. I believe it is plausible that some attempts to find hosts exposing GMX uh, via this interface are being conducted here. Interestingly, these requests do not use HTTPS, only HTTP port 80 and 8080. At this point, only one particular IP address is sourcing these scans and unremarkable IP address assigned to a colo provider. I've not really seen any direct exploit attempts and the the honeypot that detects these attempts did not really attempt to impersonate any of uh, these applications. So if this is just a scan, sort of build a target list or such, of course, I wouldn't necessarily see the follow-up scans then or, or attacks. So no exploit attempts in so far, not clear if they're actually going after the geode vulnerability, but the timing seems to be a little bit suspicious here. Definitely make sure that you're updated uh, before the long weekend or at least not exposing the services. And Microsoft published a new blog post with updates regarding its timeline to deprecate basic auth in Exchange Online. Apparently, there are still users using it, even though it was announced three years ago that basic auth will be going away. And starting October 1st, Microsoft is getting a bit more serious about this. Now, ideally, this should really have an impact for you because you're not supposed to use basic auth anymore and uh, you should have already disabled it and not be using it. But what Microsoft will do now is starting October 1st, they'll disable basic auth for random tenants. Now, this sounds a little bit, sounds a little bit odd kind of to just randomly uh, flip the switch, but you will get one week's warning before this happens. Also, if this affects you, you'll be able to re-enable basic auth, but only once for each service that is affected. There is also a diagnostic tool that you can run to see if you're still using basic auth, if you still have it enabled. So, check that, uh, make sure that you're not affected by this. If you're running it now and you figure out, hey, I still need it, I need more time to actually uh, disable it for my organization, you can push for an extension till the end of the year. And Symantec published a report looking into the use of AWS access tokens in mobile applications. It identified about 1,800 applications, both on Android and iOS, that contained hard-coded AWS credentials. Old problem, sadly, not really going away and very common practice to allow users uh, of these mobile applications to access AWS resource. Same thing happens, of course, for other cloud services as well. As Symantec points out, there are cases where this is not a big deal. You do allow uh, people to download files that are not specific to the particular user from an AWS S3 bucket, yes, you may get away with it. But remember, once that uh, key is 
in the user's hand or in the user's phone or uh, application. They have access to it. It is essentially uh, public. What Symantec did find is that there are a number of banking applications that expose AWS keys. And some of these keys are actually able to gain access to biometric authentication details like fingerprints and such that are stored within the bank's cloud infrastructure. And that's for any user of the app. So they saw something like 300,000 credentials. Not really sure about how this even happened. If you're using biometrics on your smartphone, you shouldn't uh, really have to expose the actual fingerprint data anywhere, but uh, these may be sort of some specific applications. They mentioned some SDKs being used here that sort of encourage this, that actually do the fingerprint recognition. And then we have one vulnerability to note here, yet another GitLab update. No major vulnerabilities this time. Just want to mention it because they're so uh, short following another one. So you don't think it's just the same thing. The interesting one uh, here is that it allows brute forcing passwords, even if two-factor authentication is enabled. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. And due to the Labor Day uh, weekend, uh, talk to you again on Tuesday. Bye.